Burger. And I'm not a medical doctor, but I have been working in the water and sanitation sector to reduce uh, the public health risk of the community since 1998. And today I'll talk about the water, sanitation, and hygiene in Myanmar. And I'll mention wash, wash of, of, most of the time, because wash is very common in, the, uh, in this sector. <coughs> And this is the presentation outline that I'm going to talk today. First, I'll start with country profile. And the second one is development indicators of Myanmar. And the third one is how the public health and wash is linked. And then I'll talk about more about the current wash situation in my country. And after that, uh, what are the key issues and challenges for our wash sector in our country. And the last one, I'll talk about the future of wash sector in the world. And first, I'll start with the uh, where our country is, is situated. Our country is situated in the east, uh, in Asia continent. And you will see it, this is uh, Asia continent and then Myanmar is situated in the Southeast Asia region. And we got 10 Southeast Asia countries like Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Laos, Cambodia, and Philippines, all, all together in uh, 10 countries in Southeast Asia. And then this is our uh, country symbol, uh, it's a peacock. Peacocks represent the success and prosperity of our country. And we are the second largest country in Southeast Asia region. And the population is about 60 million, according to the 2011 uh, data. And we got seven states and seven regions. And for the states, all states are situated along the border area and which are mountainous, uh, which are situated in the mountainous area. And for these regions, they are in the central and lower part of Myanmar. And we got more than 130 ethnic groups. And our, we got our own national language and this is our own transcript. You can see it. Our national language is Myanmar, and we use English as a important medium. And we are situated very close to the equator, and the climate is tropical with heavy rain. And we got three seasons: rainy season from June to October, winter season is from November to February, and then we got very dry season from March to end of. Uh, April, end of May. And this is our country. Our country is uh, known as, as uh, Burma, uh, before, formerly known as Burma. And international community is uh, called our uh, country as Golden Land. Because Myanmar loves gold. And Myanmar loves gold. And like with all the monasteries, uh, the, the pagodas, uh, statues, uh, they are covered by golden leaves. You can see this very, very eminent picture of the Shirogong border. It is situated in the former capital of Yango. But now the capital is moved to uh, Nebiro, which is in the central part of Myanmar. This is very, very famous. And you can see. But that's why we call Golden Name Myanmar. And this is uh, the uh, Pagan. You will have like an ancient pagoda back in uh, 800, 1000 years ago. And here is the beach, and there is a, a very clear sand beach in north northwestern part of Myanmar. This is Indy Lake. You can see 
they use leg instead of hands to roll the canoe. It is very, very typical for that for this lake. And I'm living close to this lake. And this is a very old bridge, uh, which was uh, constructed in uh, 1870, 1880, something like that. And this is uh, purely, uh, this was uh, purely constructed with timber. And this is the snow capped mountain at the upper part of our country, which is uh, the mountain, uh, the, the, the range of the Himalayan mountain range. <coughs> And as I said, we got more than 136 ethnic groups. And this is the uh, how many groups are composed in uh, our country. And you can see the majority of population is Bambar. And it's 68% of the population. And this is Shan. I'm dressing Shan dress. This is Shan dress. And Shan is 9% uh, of uh, the total population, and Karen is 7%. And other minor group, minority group is 16% of the population. And you can see, you know, I'm, I'm belonging to this tribe. I'm dressing the Shan dress, but I'm belonging to this tribe. This is called Pao National, Pao people. <coughs> And now I would like to talk about the historical timeline. And we were uh, colonized by the British uh, from 1886 to 1948. And we were independent from the British colonized in 1948. And we got Parliament in 1916, but there was a military coup in 1962. And we were governed by the military regime from 1962 to 2011, almost half a century, 50 years. And we, uh, the first general election was held in 2010, in 20 years. We got uh, the general elections in 2010. And now we got uh, government, the civilian government led by President Hussein Singh. And because of uh, the president and opposition leader, they worked very closely, and she, she, she was sentenced for almost 21 years in the jail. And she is uh, uh, she she got the Nobel Peace Laureate in 1991, and she is very very crucial for us and in the democratic uh, transformation process. And these are the development indicators of our country. The annual, annual population growth rate is 1.3, and adult literacy rate is 92%. Like, this is for the whole country, but because of the ethnic groups, people who are living in the remote area and from the states, their literacy rate is quite lower than the uh, people from the whole country. And you will see the people are very poor because of the military regime. And more than 75% of the population living less than living on less than $1.25 per day. And less all, uh, almost 25% of the total population have access to electricity. And that's why sometimes, you know, some people, they wanted to donate computers. And the problem is we don't have electricity to use that computer. And here is also the national, in, national income per capita is very, very low. When we compare with the region, the region, and we have only 50% of the region. And when we compare with the global, and only one-fifth of the global level. And again, because of the uh, large disparities exist across Myanmar in terms of income, uh, basic service uh, unit like uh, house, housing, health, education. And 
when we look at Myanmar, Myanmar ranked at 149 in terms of education, health, and income. The human, 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 uh, human Development Index is 149. And we, you know, we are in the low rank in, uh, when we compare with the whole uh, world. Like for US, rank is very high in four. And these are the Human Development Index of our fellow country. Mm -hmm. And Costa Rica, Brazil, to big extent, Syria, and yeah, like uh, some countries from the Central Asia. Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Cambodia. And the last, is, not the least, is Madagascar. And because of the uh, lack of uh, the uh, decision making, lack, lack of the transparency and accountability in decision making impacts the public health, uh, public service delivery. You can see only 0.2% of GDP is used for the health. And when we compare with other countries in, uh, in the region, we are in the lowest. And it is according to 2009 report. And for Cambodia, it's 1% of GDP. Vietnam is 2.5. When we compare with the United States, you know, we spend nothing for the health of the, our people. And now I will talk about wash situation. You will see here, this is people who are mainly rely on the unprotected well. And yeah, I will talk more about why they are suffering from the uh, diarrhea this century later on. And this is, you know, I took it when I went to the field uh, for the flood response in the central part of Myanmar. And people are using this water without treating it. And that's why the diarrhea, the centuries are very, very prominent in our country. And this is uh, the uh, water supply of the town in, 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 in urban area. And we don't have centralized system. And we have to use our well and our pump to get water. And you can see this is uh, the sanitation situation of rural people. They don't know, they just use this kind of lettering and they dispose of the feces directly to the uh, stream. And they use that water for drinking, for washing, for cooking. And here, this is the uh, sanitation facility for the urban people and like web of people in the rural area. Like according to the uh, UNICEF data in 2009, Myanmar, people in Myanmar have improved access to water is 71% and improved access to sanitation is 81%. We rank very high for the wash indicators, but when we look at the other indicators for health, we rank very, very low in the regions. Like the life expectancy is only 62, which is the lowest in our region. And the infant mortality rate is also 54. And the, in, the mortality rate for children until under five is 71. And this is the comparison of the, the access to improve sanitation facility. And here is 81%. And when we compare with the American and other high income countries, they have the access to improved sanitation facility is 91 to 100%. And for drinking water, is uh, for our country, it's 71% of people have access to improved water sources. And like in for the high developed, high high income countries, their the, the access to water, improved water is from 91 to 100 percent. And next slides, you will see we rank very high.
high for the indicators in water and sanitation. But when we look at the wash-related deaths, it's mean uh, pe uh, children or people uh, died from uh, what diarrhea, dysentery, cholera. The number is very very high. It is from five to in between five to fifteen percent. But for the other, like the high-income country, the debt percentage is less than 1%. And that's why, I don't know, we'll see, and next slides, we don't have you know, direct correlation between the uh, wash and health sector in our country. Yeah, the incident rates are also very, very high. And then we got many natural and man-made hazards. We are very, very prone to natural disasters. And like the widespread deforestation is also adding to the natural vulnerability. And we are prone to cyclone floods, earthquakes. You can see this, is, uh, this earthquake was in 2011. And landslide, drought in the central part of Myanmar, very, very dry. And fire, fire is also very, very common in our country. And conflict between ethnic groups, especially in the border area of, border area with China and Thailand. And these are the recent major disasters in our country, like Cyclone Nagis, for me, I got the experience for the humanitarian uh, response in 2008 because of this big disaster. And more than 85,000 people were killed and more than 50, about 54,000 people were missing. And we got, you know, you can see a series of cyclones in how many years? In th three years we got. Uh, cyclones and earthquake, one earthquake, one big earthquake in 2011. And now the conflict between uh, ethnic group is ongoing. And why we have to respond for the wash uh, needs uh, for the people in the uh, disaster or in the uh, uh, conflict affected area. And wash is a ma major cause of death for children under five. And before I came here, I, were, I was responding to uh, conflict affected area in northern part of Myanmar. And the incidence of diarrhea and dysentery was very, very high in child for the children under five. And that's why we had to walk a lot to respond the needs. And this is the hygiene improvement framework. Based on this framework, we like wash uh, players like the uh, INGOs, NGOs and uh, government agencies. We are uh, what we use this framework to prevent all the water sanitation and sanitation related diseases. And these are three main pillars. And one is they should have access to uh, hardware, like I will talk about more in, in, the, in the later slides. And then hygiene promotion also very, very important for the improvement of uh, hygiene in emergency. And enabling environment need, we have, we, we have to, we are not only providing these hardware, and conducting training, but we have to make sure their participation, their, you know, we have to communicate consistently with the affected community. And these are the priorities of the uh, wash sector. And the first one is all of the agencies provide a lot of lecturings, but the problem is the community are lagging to use it effectively and maintain the lettering for long-term sustainability. That's why we will focus on the, like for all WASH uh, agencies, 
we will focus more on the effective use and maintenance of lifting. And for water supply, here is water safety planning. What is water safety planning? And we have to make sure from the source up to the point of use, the water is uh, free from bacteria, chemicals, and like uh, in dry season, people are facing water shortage. And that's why we have to make sure the water is safe uh, and free from uh, pathogens and chemicals, and also they have enough water during dry season. And this is a long process, and we have to make sure they have uh, the enough access to the water. And again, this is uh, the water shortage and scarcity is very, very common in the dry zone, especially in the central part of uh, Myanmar and the area hit by disasters. And like for some community, they are using groundwater and they are also prone to ascending. And that's why ascending mitigation is also the priority of the wash sector. And again, hand washing. And I will talk about more why hand, wa hand washing is important. And the capacity building of local organizations. Now, uh, nowadays we got many, many local organizations, but they don't have like uh, basic principles or uh, well equipped with like the uh, how to respond effectively in the disaster or develop in development setting. That's why capacity building of local organization is also very important. <coughs> And to fulfill all the priorities of the uh, WASH uh, sector, and here is WASH interventions, what all the agencies done. And for the hardware, as I explained it before, for the hardware, we'll provide water and sanitation facilities. And for the software, uh, hygiene promotion, we'll conduct hygiene promotion with community to ensure the, all the facilities are used. Like here, this is for the hardware, like UNICEF provide hand pump uh, with uh, the, the tube well, tube well with hand pump for community. And this is the, for the software. We, we are working closely with the, uh, the, the volunteer and local staff to how to wash hands thoroughly with the uh, children. This is the picture from uh, our response in the Delta in 2008. And for key wash interventions, now I will talk about water supply. And as I mentioned before, we'll start from the sources up to the household level. And for the sources, like we provide wells, ponds, spring, and rainwater collection. Rainwater collection is a, a very crucial for people who are living in the Delta area because they can't bring water from the sea, from the river because it is saline and they have to rely on the rainwater. This is the rainwater collection pond. You, will, you can see they don't have any means to disinfect water. Just to, they, they use, uh, we like for agencies, they provide the fencing to prevent from animal entering. And that's why we have to make sure the water is safe at household level. And this is for the storage to store water. This is uh, earthen jars. And this is for the household treatment. Especially these were provided during uh, the emergencies <coughs> to prevent from the waterborne diseases. Like uh, this is filter. And for this filter, the average size household of five member can use it. And for the quality, we are testing like for the ascending and bacteriological analysis, analysis to ensure they have access to safe drinking water. And for the sanitation, we like a fly-proof lettering, which is very affordable. And even for this one, for the poor community, they can't afford to buy it. That's why agency have to provide all the materials and for them they can contribute 
labor contribution to have the fly proof latrine. And for the water seal toilets, uh, all the agencies uh, pro provided for the communal places like school, health center. And for the household labor, they normally provide this kind of latrine. And for hygiene, uh, I will show the IEC material developed uh, to be used during any disaster or any development setting. Here is, uh, for hygiene, we developed the IC material to improve their knowledge, their attitude and practice. And again, hand washing is also very important for the, to have, you know, healthy life of the community. And we talk about more, like all of the staff who are in the field, we want to make sure people have access to safe drinking water and they handle water safely at the household level. And we focus more a lot on the safe water handling at household level. And here you will see this is uh, during one emergency response in the depth in, in dry zone. And the community received the hygiene kits, which includes all the items for uh, like soap, uh, water, like a chlorine, chlorine liquid to disinfect water, and big bucket. And this is uh, one field staff explain how to use it. It is very important. Some because we we got this lesson learned in the past, and when we distribute this without explanation, they were used, you know, in like in proper place. And let me explain one example in our country. And like uh, in the past, uh, we don't use sanitary pack and we use like cotton wool. And in 2008, many organizations provided sanitary pack. And it was you know, beautiful and well packed. And for some people, they don't know it yet. They, they thought it was very precious. And they put it, you know, like they offer it to the Buddha, like, <laughs> yeah, like this, this kind of, you know, improper use. And that's why it is very, very important to explain what are the items in the kit and how do they use it. And this is also very good uh, time to, you know, the, improve their knowledge. And why hand washing is very important. And this is the survey done in 2005. And all are important. And like hand washing can prevent from uh, diarrhea and dysentery by 44%. That's why we focus a lot on our hand washing. We can't do it alone. All have to be combined to reduce the incidence of diarrhea. That's why. This is very, very important. And this is the posters that was used in the cyclo-heary response in 2008. And here you can see how to wash hands thoroughly at key times. And this is how to treat water at household level. And this is how to use chlorine liquid. And this is very, very important for the community to increase their knowledge and to change their practice. And these are the government ministries involved in the wash sectors. We don't have one uh, minister, ministry, and we, like for all, agency have to deal with many ministries, like Ministry of Health, Department of Development Affairs, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Agriculture, and Ministry of Social Welfare, especially during the disaster response. They are the focal person of the disaster response. And again, these are the humanitarian and development agencies involved in Watch sector. Like for national organization, we got more than 40. And for international, 
there are 13 NGOs and 13 INGOs and 4 UNs. You will see this is uh, the response in the uh, dry zone of Myanmar. Uh, it's Oxfam and ECHO. And this is the uh, local organizations. Because of the political changes and many local NGOs are now, at least we got many NGOs and they, you know, can take. We got many, many challenges to fulfill the uh, priority of the watch sectors and to the needs of our community. Like uh, climate change, I think it is everywhere. And because of the climate change, uh, especially people in the Delta area and the dry zone, the water, the availability of water is very, very limited. And we have to focus a lot on it. And like uh, the risk of cyclone and other disaster is nowadays, it is very, very challenging for the for all sectors. And like hygiene promotion, it is software and it takes time and we need long-term investment to achieve, to prevent the d diseases and to improve the health of the community. And another challenge is also the sustainable sustainability of the wash facilities. Like, and because of the short-term programs with limited fund, like for all agencies, they can't work very long in the community. That's why this is all also very, 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 very challenging for the wash sector. And again, community participation and sense of ownership is also very, 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 very challenging for the wash sector. And as I said before, the current health sector do not correlate with the water and sanitation indicators. And we got high indicators for wash, but very low indicators in health. We have many, many challenges, but there are also some opportunities for us to improve the health of community. Like, in the past, we don't have emergency, big emergency, and now, for, for, for people in Myanmar, they, we increase a lot in the capacity to respond for the emergency and development. That's why we gain experience a lot for the development and emergency. And there are in many, there are many numbers of what specialists in Myanmar, and again, because of the political changes and more, we are hoping to get more funding from international community. And yeah, this is also very, very important for us. We have now the opportunity for to talk with the government and then we'll have opportunity to create coherent system at national level. As I mentioned, we have to deal with many, many ministries and there is no common uh, coordination mechanisms. That's why we have to create a coherent system at national level to work effectively. And this is the last uh, slides for me, uh, why we are go heading, how we are heading for the uh, wash sector in our country. And as I said, the government and the president has commitment to the uh, reforms. That's why we got the opportunity and to tackle and to, to overcome one of the major Myanmar largest uh, health problems in our country. And all the current approaches will be continued to ensure the people are healthy and have access to improve water supply and sanitation. And this is, we are talking about at the field level. And one important thing is we have to develop and to the policy and strategy. We don't have that kind of policy and strategy at national level. If we want to work effectively, we have to develop policy and strategy and working closely with the government ministry. And 
this is also important for us and when we get us to build the local organization, they will more equipped with skills and then we can expand our coverage throughout Myanmar. And thank you so much. And thank you.